Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Age of Wonders 4 in the Overexplained series, where things are starting to kick off, and we're about to engage in a very nice war with Stapleton. We're going to take out Stapleton, potentially vassalize them, and then that will be us uh, firmly in control of a sector of the map, and then we can start to push towards our late game move. Now, I think I actually made a serious error. I haven't actually built up enough souls for what I want to do. Um, I should have gone for the tier two necromancy book purely for the soul well. I need that soul income. Uh, in order to actually do the, I believe it's the Whiteborn Major Racial Transformation, you actually have to have a certain amount of souls in the bank. So I'm going to have to start collecting up souls and being a little bit more diligent about how many souls I have. Now, taking a look at our capital here, we've actually managed to develop it pretty well. If I go into the city structure screen, I would actually really like it if this was organized based on the yield and type of building, like have the library, arcane institute and academy all together so that I could see how it's developed. I haven't built many food buildings and that can be kind of inferred by the fact that the city is not growing very quickly. So I think now would be a good time to focus on increasing the growth of my capital. Now, I could also use the mana. But I think growth will be the thing that really helps me out in the long term. And so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop down here. I'm going to grab this pasture. It is occupied, but he should leave, I believe, or I can actually get him to leave, I think. Um, but I'll build a forester down there. The second forester will allow me to build a granary. Then I will need to build a second farm and then a third forester. So we should start to see the growth of the city start to curve upwards um, in the near future. Now, Duskwatch can also annex a new province. And in this city, we do have some ruined farms that I'm going to go ahead and repair. I think I'm going to go ahead and get my second farm in this city. Ideally, I would expand down towards the south. I'll put a farm here for now, although that's not the long term plan. And I will go ahead and get myself the storehouse, which has the equivalent value of two farms. And then I'll work on the dread spire for that extra gold income. And we'll kind of continue to develop this city. I also it might be good for me to get that arcane institute. I'm going to prioritize the research purely again because we're going for a tech rush build now. Speaking of tech rush builds, uh, okay, yeah, we're still researching Amplify Mind, so we will get that extra knowledge. We have managed to found Gloomhearth. We're working on that workshop. That's fine. One of my heroes leveled up. This is Moloch Lord Seeker, who is one of my magical heroes. He is definitely more of a support-oriented hero. I'm going to go ahead and take Inspiring Leader here. This will lower the upkeep of units in his army, which should free up a little bit of cash for me. It's not going to be a massive amount of cash because these guys are all tier one units, but it will mean that even the mana upkeep of their enchantments will be a little bit easier to manage. I would like to get a third hero. Um, I probably will have a, a hero join request. Uh, Darth Meow Meow has leveled up as well. Now, we can finally pick the signature skill. Now, the signature skill for your hero is important for a number of reasons. For, uh, for your ruler, rather. Because your ruler's signature skill, they will actually gain an affinity in one of these abilities, which will increase an affinity in your race. So, for example, if I take Demon Step now, I will actually go up to my second Chaos Affinity. Um, if I take Dark Ritual, I would get my 11th Shadow Affinity. And here's the thing. Um, do I really need much more Shadow Affinity? It's going to take me 32 turns to get to Spying Shadows. I suppose I could get that down to like 29 turns if I took the Affinity. So this is the kind of stuff that you have to kind of be, uh, you know, taking into account when you're deciding these decisions. But on top of that, you also have to worry about like this signature skill. What is the effect it's actually going to have in battle? But it also has consequences there. So Dark Ritual is definitely on brand. It would allow me to turn corpses into to zombies which fits already incredibly well with our raise undead. A uh, virulent bond would make my enemies weak to disease and poison. A uh, warding bond would allow me to make another unit really strong. I, I think Dark Ritual is unfortunately the best move here, so I will take it. And the reason it's unfortunate is because I really don't want to take a shadow affinity. Um, but these other abilities just aren't that good. Now, I am going to, let me see here, spell amplification. Oh, yes, here we go. Makes tactical spells deal 20% extra damage. This is really good. I will go ahead and take that. Alrighty, let's go ahead and enchant Amplified Arrows on our tier, on our, well, we only have tier 1 range units, but on our range units. This will give our range units a lot of AoE. It's going to be a huge increase in their damage. And I would, I would really like to recruit another hero here. So I have one magic, one magic hero, one support hero, and I think I'm going to get a melee fighter hero. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy. He has defense, fighting, and sprint. Let's recruit him. He can go manage my third stack. Um, does he have any more levels? No, he spent all his levels, so we'll go ahead and bring him towards... He's also mounted, which is nice. I need to get a mount for my my, my main hero. I just I don't have a mount right now. Kind of sucks. I, I really hope they bring in a DLC that allows you to create items like you could in like the other Master Magic style games. Um, so I do have a hero in my crypt, so I should start looking into things that I can do with that. Uh, namely, if I go to Cardboard Box here... Oh, I need to rename the city a Duskwatch. This is going to be Warm Laptop. 
uh, because my cats just occupy like really nice places that cats enjoy. Gloom Hearth, I'm going to rename. This will be a uh, 3 a.m. meowing fit. The, uh, just naming all of my cities after things that cats like. Right, so I have three full stacks of units. Each of them is led by a hero, and I'm feeling very, very powerful. I don't need to build any more military for a little while. These three snacks should be enough to tide me over at least for the foreseeable future. Let's start casting Amplify Mines on our cities. We have just finished that research. I am going to go ahead and get the Tome. I, I really want the Tome of the Doom Herald eventually, um, but I'm going to go for the Tome of Necromancy first so that I can get the Soulwell province improvement, and then I'm going to immediately look into building that. It's going to be a great opportunity for me to talk about tier two province or, or high tier province improvements. Let's see here. We can go for Necrotic Magic, which would give our Battle Mage units the Decaying debuff, which prevents enemies from healing. It's really good against healing based builds. We could also research the Necromancer. I don't really want to spend any of my souls. Um, so I think I'm going to go for Necrotic Magic just to make my mages slightly stronger. This will give them a little bit of damage over time as well as being able to prevent healing is actually a really powerful ability. Stapleton has sent a war party to raid my domain. However, we are in position to intercept it. And let's go ahead and have a look at Cardboard Box. Now, down here we have our special province improvements. Every, uh, every research that you unlock typically will give you a new special province improvement. Typically. It's not entirely true. Uh, this is our cultural special province improvement. This is the Dark Forge. It gives us seven draft, seven gold, and seven draft per adjacent quarry or mine. Um, to put that into perspective, a normal mine gives you five gold. So these are generally quite a bit better than normal tile improvements. Now, I really need to build the soul well, uh, but the question is, where do I plan to build it? So there's a research post over here, and the soul well scales off of adjacent research posts and conduits. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pop it on this Forester. So what you do is you select the thing that you want to build, like for example the soul well, and then you click on the tile you want to build it on. In this case, um, on this Forester. And then I right click, I believe. And now in eight turns, three turns for the granary, five for the soul well, this will be built and in position and you know, providing me resources. New Empire development skill is available. I would really like to get the Exalted by Shadows. This would allow our heroes to level up twice as fast. Really quite a powerful ability. Um, we also have the ability to get Astral Inspiration, which will increase our research rate, which I'm going to go ahead and take, because basically whenever we research a new research skill, uh, the knowledge cost of another random skill will be reduced by 25%. So it means every time we research a technology, some other tech gets cheaper, which is a very handy thing. It is effectively reducing the total amount of research we need to get to the tech that we want. Uh, it looks like we've been attacked by a very small army. Um, we are in a golem mine, so they will get an iron golem. That's not a big deal. Uh, we will take a very small amount of damage. Some of my units will level up. We'll collect some souls. We got 27 souls out of that, which is fantastic. And 250 research. Um, that's beautiful. I'm going to start pillaging these research, uh, these, these these tile improvements for two reasons, right? First of all, the money is nice uh, because I am starting to run out of cash. I don't have negative cash flow, but I, I'm just running out of cash, which is obviously not ideal. We have just finished researching Necrotic Magic. I'm not going to cast that just yet because I can't afford it. Um... I think I will take Bone Golems. They're a reasonable tier two shock unit. Uh, it actually instantaneously got finished. Now I'm going to take um, the Amplification Pylon is a kind of an interesting summon. So I'll take that. It makes your spells better. You should probably try to summon one of those at least once per fight. Um, I'm going to go ahead and annex the Serpent's Cavern because that's going to be 20 production, two mana and five Imperium. Imperium is an extremely difficult resource to get a hold of. So that's really nice. And then I will build the shrine, um, which will mean this city will develop really quickly. But here's the thing. The more production a city has, the faster it consumes gold. So that is something you do have to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and cast Amplify Mind. I'm a little bit scared. I have a lot of spells to cast. So I'm I'm researching so quickly that my need for mana and gold is starting to outstrip my ability to generate that economy. So that's something that we have to keep in mind. I can always sell uh, hero corpses if I so desire, if I think it's important for me to develop. But I should start burning down resources now, um, which will mean a significant increase in the total amount of gold that will be available to my empire, which is quite nice. We have a new event here in Stapleton. So I can give them, uh, no, I will be keeping this corpse because I want the negative alignment, because I want to get to the pure evil alignment, because I am a scion of evil, which means I get a lot of benefits from being evil. Uh, I can show you that by going to the diplomacy screen, clicking on races, clicking on the dark felines and showing you that I am a scion of evil. So for every negative evil alignment level, and there are three, I will get five Imperium per turn and 10 draft per turn in my cities, which is about, uh, I think uh, that's about 2.5 food. So that's like half a farm um, when you're not building a unit, which is like, that's pretty decent. Also, when I'm at maximum evil alignment, all of my units will be recruited at plus one rank. 
which effectively is like, it means they reach the final rank sooner. And it also means that they just come out the gate like slightly stronger. All right, so we're going to be doing a mass pillage here to completely obliterate Stapleton um, to just steal all of their resources. I'm also going to disband this archer because he's using up resources every turn um, and we don't need him. And I really need that re those resources. Uh, let's go ahead and continue. We have met a new leader. I can't afford to do diplomacy, so I'm not going to send him any money to make him happy with me. Right now, we just really need to focus on improving our economy by pillaging. My scouts did a great job actually picking up some gold that turn as they ran around in the underground to start the pillage. We have finished researching conjuring the amplification pylon. I will research necromancers for the sake of it because they're actually a pretty strong mid to late game um, unit. They are a tier three support unit with raise and strengthen undead, which is a pretty decent unit. Warm laptop is ready to annex another tile. We need to start thinking about our gold income here. So things like the um, underground laboratory are going to need to be built. So that's going to be very harm, f very farm heavy. Um, I will go ahead and get another quarry in here to keep the city developing. The quarry will allow it to build things faster. Cardboard box can annex another province. Uh, we are building a soul well. Let's see what we could do in terms of gold. We would need to build a mine in order to do that. And I'll probably put a mine here. Maybe I'll put the Dark Forge over there. I'll probably put two mines here. Eventually, I'll try to maybe flatten this tile and put the Dark Forge there. Um, but I haven't even built my Wizard Tower. That's probably going to be the next thing I build in here. God, I'd love to build that Dark Forge. But I, I need to get the city developing. Um, so let's go ahead and get our second farm, I think. That will allow us to actually build the Estate Hall. And it will boost the Stonemason as well. So a quest for cultivation, the Aftermath... I can nurture crops, get a bunch of food. I like that. I like that. A whole bunch of extra food. Ooh, or I could get an insane amount of mana for six turns. Uh, that is a genuinely insane amount of mana. Um, I'm now, I went from making 20 mana to 100 mana per turn. So this is actually going to open up uh, the option for me to cast Amplify Minds like very willy-nilly, maximizing my science per turn, which is exactly the kind of thing that I like to do. We have met another ruler well concealed, which means our scout unit has spotted his unit, but he has not spotted our sc scout unit. So we have the choice to either meet him or remain concealed. I'm going to meet the ruler so that we can engage in diplomacy and learn about who they are. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just continue. Right, let's take Darth Meow Meow. Oh wait, no, she's not finished pillaging. Let's bring um, Moloch Lord Seeker over here to put this city under siege. We'll start the siege. Um, and we actually don't need to like break this city for a little while. So I reckon we can do a headlong assault. We could just do a harass defenders. They do have towers. So I'm going to go ahead and tower bombard here for 100 mana. It's one turn's worth of mana, just so we'd have to deal with less towers during the actual assault. And this should give us a pretty easy chance of breaking the city in five turns. I'm going to go ahead and jump in the water to try and pillage this fishery. Remember, every single one of these tiles that I can pillage, that's worth 75 gold that I can then use to improve the rest of my cities. I really want to get this Lost Queen's Crypt inside this city as well. It is a research post, so it's worth a lot of mana, or sorry, worth a lot of knowledge. And I need to also remember that quarries in this city are actually worth mana too. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a bit of a quarry rush here. This city is going to be a very, very strong mana generation city. So I'll go for another mana obelisk. This city will be, I don't know if it will be a conduit city, but I know at the least it will have a strong mana income because I'm going to get, uh, I'll probably go to like three quarries first here, something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and cast Amplify Minds in here too. Perfect. So we're up to over 250 signs per turn, which is like insane. Other rulers have gone to war. It doesn't matter to me. And Infestation is sending an invasion force, which again, I will have to deal with, but we can deal with that after we kill Stapleton. Um, I don't mind taking a little bit of damage if my armies are like busy in the course of, you know, inflicting justice. <laughs> I actually, I should have the capability to integrate this free city now. And I think that's actually a really good move. So I'm going to go ahead and integrate them. And I'm going to inspect the city. I'm going to tell the city to no longer automate the expansion. I'm going to manually expand the city. And I'm going to do a little bit of a stock take. We have the potential to generate a lot of technology here. Or, let's see. There's actually a huge potential for mana in here. Um, massive, massive, massive potential. There's good potential for gold too. So I like the gold potential. Let's swap this qu quarry over to a farm. I'm going to swap this research post over to a quarry. Because again, I'm just trying to think about how, how best do I develop the city. And then I'll swap this to a forester. No, it should be a farm as well. Because what I would really like to do is to start building up my underground laboratory. But I'm going to go ahead and build the Dread Spire to get that 10 gold per turn first. I also really need to build a Palisade Wall and also just generally grow this city. I did get two heroes from this, which is a bit of a problem because now I'm over the hero cap. But I will keep a hero, th th these two heroes. Ooh, I like... Yeah, I'm going to keep both of these heroes, even if they are expensive. Oh, man, deleting a hero. Like, if you think about it, that's 300 gold over 10 turns. But, like, having a level 5 and a level 7 heroes is, like, a big deal. So I'm just going to keep them. I'll move them over to the capital. And eventually, I'll be able to buy another city cap and maybe annex Stapleton. I could probably annex Stapleton. Uh, yeah, you know what? I could extend my city cap 
in like nine turns and then pretty easily annex Stapleton. That's provided I don't have any events that make that even easier. And if I annex Stapleton, um, I'll probably release it as a vassal then look to annex it. I like how you can kind of see underneath the map that there's like a little bit of graphical weirdness at the edge of the boundary. <laughs> oh wow, I was not expecting a three stack counterattack. Now I believe, okay, we're up against some Iron Golem assistants, which are, wow, okay. These are legendary Iron Golem assistants. A ton of Iron Golem assistants. I don't know where these things are coming from. I didn't know you could even recruit those. We're up against archers. I think I think the auto combat should be kind to us here. Um, but I will manually fight this. Um, also, it's worth 66 souls. I think this is worth manually fighting. So the big thing that we want to do is we generally we want to choose like a side to concentrate our forces on. Uh, we're up against... Do we? Have, so are we up against much AoE? These guys don't do much AoE. This guy has just the Lightning Evocation and Warding Bond. Okay, so no AoE on that front. This guy has just Slashes and Assassinate. So he can Assassinate. So Helene Avery, that should be our number one target to kill because the Assassinate can always trigger. And he's also over here on his own, kind of vulnerable. So we're actually going to push hard left here. This has a cooldown of two turns. I guess I'll drop it. Um, I'll do a Baleful Curse here to lower their resistance to magic. And then I will drop a Dark Ritual just because it's a nice little AoE ability and might hurt them. You're slightly out of range. So I'm going to get my units all within the range of him so that we can chase down and target this hero to take him out. And then the rest of this army is going to do something a little bit similar. Basically going to pivot around this point and try to collapse around as this side retreats back. That's the basic idea. So we got a, we got 10% crit chance there because they cast a spell, a map spell, which is perfect. Okay, he actually ran somewhere I wasn't expecting him to. And now he's pushed forward with his archers, which I also was not expecting, leaving them extremely vulnerable. Um, this is a big mistake on his part. So uh, I'm going to drop a Baleful Curse here to make all these guys weak. You are going to clear out this golem. One, two, three amazing and the bounce is unreal also the amazing thing about the amplified arrows is if an archer kills a unit it will then redirect to the unit that the damage is bouncing to which is genuinely insane and we're critting like crazy uh let's move one tile to the right and begin blasting this guy blam blam oh the crits are insane these um, shock units didn't even get a chance to attack this turn that's how effectively so the sweep is already beginning you you kill here bam I want you to push forward. God, I nearly... This is a... Give me the crit. Give me the crit. Come on. No crit. Okay. If I Sundering Curse you, that'll make you very vulnerable to a potential charge attack. Can I also offer you a couple of zaps in this trying time? Give me that Soulbound modifier. Amazing. Give me that crit. Oh, baby. It's all coming together. Uh, Sundering Curse. I wasn't expected to kill this many stuff on the second turn, or I wouldn't have cast Dark Ritual on the first turn. That feels like it was a little bit of a mistake. I need to kill their archers. Archers are their DPS, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And boom. Um, that was an absolutely disgusting counterattack turn. I don't even care how much damage that my hero takes here, because um, it's going to be nothing in comparison to what I'm going to do to the enemy. <gasps> His assassinate went off. That's annoying. Oh, right. So I do need to protect my hero here. He does have the Wand of Mass Healing, so he could heal himself. Let's bring this archer forward. We'll shoot this guy to remove his Strengthened. That will kill that archer in the background. You are going to shoot this guy three times. One, two, and three. Perfect. You're going to come two tiles, four tiles this way, I guess. And you'll shoot this guy to damage him. These guys are just hard to hit. Come forward. Magically bolt him. Baleful Strike. There we go. There's Fortune. Mm, blast him in the butt. Bam. Blast him in the butt. Bam. You step back a tile. Zap him twice. One and two. We need to kill him. There's the kill. And that should be the flea on the enemies, right? Oh no, the golems don't have morale. I can kill this golem at least. Boom. And you should get a stack of healing. Because this guy's weakened, right? Oh, you didn't get a stack of healing. Now I regret my decision. Unless I run to here... Take that. AoE heal. Oh, we saved him. That was This has actually almost been a perfect battle. Aside from the assassinate insta-giving me, uh, near perfect battle. Like, in act, like really, genuinely near perfect. So is there a way for me to catch these guys? I don't think so. Lightning weakness, blam, blam, blam. I'll just let them flee. There's a chance we catch him. He might get away. Oh yeah, we got him. Oh, 64 souls, 500. Oh, 300 mana too. 
Oh my god, the spoils of war. That was insane. I don't know why we got so much stuff out of that. I can't explain that. Right, we finished researching the Necromancer. Now we can go to the Tome of the Great Transformation and get Whiteborn, which will turn my entire race into undead. It does have some downsides, but it will make us much stronger. Let's go ahead and select that. We have just about the 200 souls we need for Whiteborn. If I don't, there it is. I was going to say, if I don't see Whiteborn, I'm going to search for it. I will be locking in Fetid Legion because this is a fantastic buff for my units to give them 10 health and weakening aura. Um, the survivability capability of my empire right now is actually kind of nuts. The fact that I'll have Cull the Weak and Lifesteal is going to be absolutely brilliant. Now, I feel that this tile right here is a great spot for a Dark Forge. It'll hit two mines. Um, I believe we have to wait until the Town Hall Dread Spire is done, though. Um, but I will pop that Forester right there, because that is part of the plan. Uh, now we, we're starting to stack up a nice amount of heroes in the crypt, and we are building the Wizard Tower, and once we have the Wizard Tower finished, we'll be able to, we'll be able to do some very fun and interesting things with heroes in our crypt. Who said a little bit of resurrection uh, wasn't on the cards? Okay, the Revenant Horde. So I can bind the Horde to my will using mana. Um, I can dispel them, get a free level, and get 100 souls. I like the idea of 100 souls. Or I can gain a population. Um, I can get a bunch of knowledge... I think I'm going to go ahead and take the souls. It's quite hard for me to get souls, so it's good to have them. Uh, we did just finish our first soul well, so now we actually generate souls per turn. That's going to be very helpful. You consider it's turn 35 and we only have 300 souls in the bank, right? So a soul well over the course of the game, of, of the next 35 turns, will generate about a third of the total souls that I've generated in the entire game so far. I don't think I've spent any. So it is quite important to get that, that passive soul generation going. Right, this town is now tier two. We are being invaded, which is a little bit unfortunate. Maybe this here, maybe these these pair of heroes can actually do the work here to, to clean that up. Warm laptop needs to be boosted. Um, the thing I'd really like to do is to get more gold in here. So the underground laboratory, the 10 gold per turn is going to help us out. Uh, you can also annex another province. This city is definitely going to need to do some fishery stuff for sure. Um, but we don't have to do it yet. Let's go for our second forester. Boom. That'll mean more buildings are boosted. Uh, and we're building up an overwhelming economy. We have here Belor Lord Seeker. He has leveled up. Um, now, if we take a look at his abilities, he has a variety of support abilities. What, do, what does he have? Experience leader. Don't like that one. This is okay. This I'm going to go ahead and reset his skills because I don't like his I don't like his layout. I will be taking um, Restore Soul Collector. Boom. Uh, inspiring leader. Defensive training. Boom. Then. Unholy Leader, so that undead units get 10% more damage, because all of my units will be undead. Keep that in mind. Endurance Training for the 15 hit points in my army. That's going to be fantastic. Dark Ritual, brilliant. Just make the zombies perfect. Okay, so this guy is now super, super good. Um, any equipment we want to add to him? No, I don't think so. That's fine. Let's cast Amplify Mind on my new city. Six mana per turn for 20 research. Uh, let's go ahead and cast Band, Band of Wrath as well, because this will eventually be a useful thing to have. Defensive Pacts are being made. We have a Rally of the Lieges. We could recruit some Stormscale Sp Serpents if we would like. These are Tier 2 fighter units uh, with a melee strike. This guy has a chance to electrify. He is elusive, so he is not. He can ignore zones of control, which allows him to get the, the back lines. He's also statically charged, which means when he gets a hit in melee, enemies take damage. I mean, it's a pretty okay Tier 2 melee fighter. It's not going to inherit many of the bonuses that my things have. Maybe if I was going for more of an animal-based build... I would be able to justify this a little bit more. But, I mean, paying this price for a Tier 2 fighter, you compare this guy, right? The Plague Serpent, right? Melee Strike with a Chance of Diseased. These aren't bad units in the early game. But if you compare, like, what I would be paying for, like, a Night Guard, 12 gold, 2 mana, this thing has a really powerful melee strike. It has Astral Blood, so it scales off of spell casting at Frostblade. It's a Dark Stalwart, so it has a 90% chance of inflicting Sundered Defense and Sundered Resistance to adjacent enemy units. It has Cold Weak. It has all of these bonuses, right? So I currently... And it's also going to be Whiteborn soon, the second we finish researching Whiteborn. Though I don't, I don't see a reason to recruit these Stormscale Serpents from the thingy. Now, if I, if I was going for an animal build, they would fit right in. Which is why I'm kind of curious about this corrupt soul, because I believe this is an ethereal slash undead uh, unit. Let's go ahead and take the Lost Queen's Crypt. This is going to give me 25 mana, or 25 research, plus 5 Imperium. And it's also going to give me soul income based on the number of heroes I have in my crypt. Because the Lost Queen's Crypt is an ancient wonder that gives you 2 mana, 2 knowledge, and 1 soul if a hero is in your crypt. Which means... Now that we've built the Wizard Tower's foundation here, which will give us Imperium income and also increase the vision range of the city, uh, you can actually see, if you zoom in, you can sometimes see the Wizard Tower being, being built. Now when we build the crypt, we'll get two mana per turn from 
uh, heroes in our crypt, which is actually, this is going to scale really well as we start getting into fights with other players. And the prison cells will also give us knowledge based on the heroes that we've captured. We're basically beating the knowledge out of them, but it'll also allow us to execute them and put them in the crypt, which we'll then get souls for. So, you know, soul economy starting to come online. Hopefully you're starting to see how all of the decisions that I've been making in the not, you know, like not too distant past are starting to all coalesce into a unifying plan. Right, we built the Tower of Dark, uh, the, the town of Darkspire into a tier two town. I'm going to go ahead and build the Palisade Wall so the city isn't easily assaulted. I will also spend, a, I'll spend a little bit of time building defenses here. I think the Archer Battlement is a reasonable thing to do. The Caltrop Stash is a reasonable thing to do. But this is just to bring the city's fortification up from zero. Palisade will give me 20. The Archer Battlement will give me five. And the Caltrop will give me five. So that'll be 30, which means it'll take at least, what, three turns to siege this down at a baseline. Um, which is pretty decent. Then I would like to get the Dark Forge to get that seven gold income. Um, but more importantly, it would allow me to eventually build the high tier gold buildings, the Merchant's Guild, and I'd get 10 gold per Merchant Guild, which would be, you know, pretty, be pretty decent in the city. I'd get an extra 30 gold, which ain't bad. I might be able to get another mine or two in here, depending on the circumstances. Um, but anyway, let's do the Dark Forge on that Forester right there. Perfect. Now I'm spending money really, 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 really quickly. Um, but I'm spending money to build up my economy because I'm, I'm doing a, a sort of a late game. It, it, it's a turtle build, kind of, but it's also not a turtle build. Um, it's a tech rush build, which means we have to build up a really strong economy to support all the late game units and enchantments that I'm going to be running. Um, a shadow domain will give my unit universal camouflage. We could also gain plus one rank on all of our heroes. I would like all of these things. Also, our armies can actually regenerate hit points in enemies terrain. And eventually we can get Spying Shadows and just reveal the map. So a lot of really cool abilities are kind of coming down the pipeline for us in the near future. Uh, we have been attacked by NPCs. We've managed to kill them without any losses. We take a little bit of stuff. Perfect. Let's see if these two heroes can clear this stack with just an auto combat. Yeah, they can easily clear that. And then I should be able to rebuild. Oh, uh, do not attack that. That was not the plan. <laughs> we should be able to repair that now. Uh, we have finished the Whiteborn Major Racial Transformation. You can only have one Major Racial Transformation. And this is a big deal because now all of my units will have lifesteal. Now, just to put that into perspective, okay, when a Dark Warrior attacks, they have Cold the Weak. As long as the enemy is weakened, they will also gain a stack of regeneration. Now they're also going to have lifesteal. So when they attack, they're going to immediately regenerate 10 health. Then they're going to regenerate 6 health at the end of the turn because they'll get a stack of regeneration. So every time these guys are hitting, they're regenerating 16 health. Uh, they regenerate 6 health for 3 turns. So this major racial transformation is huge. Plus now it's the undead type, which means they're immune to morale. My units will never rout. We're immune to poison, which is really strong against uh, nature builds. Quite strong against other shadow builds too that don't go undead. Um, weak to chaos and order builds because of the spirit resistance stuff but we can do we can do stuff about that um yeah i'm going to take whiteborn we're going to immediately start casting that cost 200 souls and 300 mana it'll take another three turns to finish that's totally fine by me and we have managed to build walls here in darkspire cardboard box can annex another province i want to guess my third forester so that i can boost the estate hall so i guess i'll start working on those foresters Moloch Lord Seeker has leveled up. Let's see what ability we can get. The Draining Blade is not great for a ranged hero. Frostfire Detonation is okay. Yeah, I'll take Frostfire Detonation. That's like a pretty good AoE damage ability, um, especially for a ranged mage. Now, I could also retool him to something else if I wanted to. I could make him a support hero. Support heroes are really good. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave him as he is for now. And eventually we might change him around. There is like optimal ways to build your heroes and stuff. So let's auto combat to clear this hero. Um, losing a single Dark Warrior is totally fine. Another 250. Oh my God, we're just getting so many resources, dude. Um, now, we're going to do something a little bit unorthodox. We're actually going to raise this city for the money. And then we'll just rebuild it. I know we could just migrate it, but uh, the it's cheaper to rebuild it. Um, and also we get the money. <laughs> so that's quite nice. And right now we're having trouble with money. Um, so this is going to be a big moment for us. We have, uh, we have conquered a significant chunk of land. We're in a really strong position technologically. Uh, we're already in to tier three tech and we're going to very soon get to tier four. Let's go for Fetid Legion. This is going to give 10 health to all. Remember those shock units that are healing now of 10 health per turn. Now they just have 10 more base health, right? So they're just, my units are just becoming stronger. Let's get the granary in here. I want to keep growing my cities. I need, I need to grow, 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 grow. And it would be good for me to get into some 
fight so that I could collect more remains. It would also be good for me to maybe start looking into expanding into the underground, not to actually expand my empire, but more so that I could plop down a couple of little vassal cities here, clear out some nodes, get a couple of good vassals, maybe look into like annexing Chankton and stuff like that. Um, speaking of which, let me come in here. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this Whispering Stone so that I can play around any of these free cities that I meet because I'm sure that I will find more. My explorers are doing a great job revealing the map. I'm quite happy with them. And actually, I managed to spawn in a really isolated spawn, which is just like super lucky because I'm going to be going for a magic victory this game, um, which Shadow is particularly good at doing, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to take these two army stacks back to my territory. I only need one army stack to sit there and actually finish the um, raising. These other two can come home and start thinking about clearing out the Oracle Woods, clearing out the Pilgrim's Passage, clearing out the monster den. Um, and then once we do that, maybe we'll head over and clear out the large monster den. Maybe we'll go to the underground. We'll settle some cities. You know, we've got a, we've got a few tasks on our on our cards right now. We're stretched a little a little thin, a little, a little thin militarily, but we can make it work. Our alignment has changed to pure evil, which I'm now delighted with. Uh, that's absolutely brilliant. So we are just raking in the Imperium as well as raking in the draft in my cities. You can see here, I'm getting 30 draft per city for being a dark feline. It's fantastic. You know, I could send these two heroes to go govern this city. We'll have to, I'll have to get rid of these mountains. That'll have to be something that I look into doing um, through some sort of terraforming. There is a rather large spider army coming and we have found the city of Rampart. I'm going to go ahead and give them a whispering stone. Uh, let's go ahead and keep the discussion to about Rampart. I'm here to talk about the movie. Um, that is a, that is a classic IMA uh, reference right there and you can't tell me otherwise. <laughs> uh, Fetid Legion has been completed. We will be casting this as soon as Whiteborn is finished. Let's go ahead and go for... Well, none of these are actually really good. I'm going to go ahead and do a little shuffle here. Ooh, Rotting Explosion allows me to detonate um, some zombies. Ooh, Desecrate, desecrate Structure could be a fantastic way for me to increase my mana income. I'm going to take that. Now, 3 a.m. Meow Meowing Fit has produced a new building. Let's go for the Dread Spire. We need that gold income. Gold income is currently my main objective. And so... I need to get at least two farms in this city. Let's go ahead and build a farm. That will allow me to build the experimentation chambers. Uh, boosted. The City of Cardboard Box has finished its construction queue as well. I could go for the Scholar's Guild. That's not the play, I don't think. Um, I think I'm going to go for the Stonemason to increase the production in here. Then I'd like to build the Interrogation Dungeon and the Ritual Mausoleum. Uh, because that would lead to me getting quite a bit of extra knowledge and mana. But I also really need to build the estate hall, so it's kind of hard to know. Uh, maybe it would be good to build a blacksmith. Also, I need to build the Seed of Shadow, which is the um, special province improvement for Shadow. You need to build three of these things in order to achieve your magic victory. There's a Seed of Shadow, the Root of Shadow, and the Heart of Shadow. And the way that I'd like to build them is in like a, a three-way loop. Like one here, one here, one here. So they're all adjacent to each other so I can defend them all with the same armies. But let's go ahead and cast Whiteborn. My entire race now should become undead, undead, astrally attuned cat people. Um, can you think of anything more dangerous? Right, Fetid Legion is quite expensive, but I think it is worth the payoff. So let's go ahead and start casting Fetid Legion. Let's go ahead and drop a, another forester in this city so that we can um, build the estate hall, which will be another 30 food income. Keep the growth rate just skyrocketing because the growth rate will allow us to effectively boost all the buildings. So to kind of, to kind of figure out what I'm doing in this is I'm trying to lay out my tile improvements, my, my province improvements in a way that I can boost all of the buildings up to tier three. Um, there's three typical tiers, like in order to boost mana obelisks, the tier three mana obelisk, I need three quarries. So I try to get three farms, three quarries, and then three foresters. And then I try to build, and then I pick a guild. We'll talk about guilds when we actually get to that, but this is just like the efficient way that I found to develop your cities. And it's really satisfying once you figure it out and sort of start to get a feel for it. It's a very late game focused build. It's a very late game focused way to develop your cities, which doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct way, but... Here's the thing, if someone declares war on me and I need resources right now, I could just click on this quarry, change it to mine, click on this quarry, change it to mine, I click on this quarry, change it to a mine, that would get me an extra 15 gold per turn, which I could then start pumping into Dark Warriors, right? So, yeah, I don't know. B the, the boosting of buildings thing, it just, it just gives your cities so much development potential, because it makes upgrading a city 30% cheaper, which is insane, and makes it upgrade 30% faster. Um, secretly sell the Frost Axe for 400 gold. Uh, yes, I will be selling that with a 100% shadow check. Thank you very much for this event. Gold, gold, cash is king, man. I need as much money as I can get. Uh, don't be afraid to feel poor in this game. 
So we raised that city, we got 800 gold and 500 gold, so now we're flush with cash. Here's a great thing about playing Shadow. You can animate ruins and not spend Imperium to rebuild the cities that you destroy. So I'm going to go ahead and animate the ruins in here and then use the Imperium that I've saved up to get a new city slot next turn, which means I will not suffer the over city limit penalty and that city will instantly generate 30 gold per turn because I have a hero that's already recruited. A hero that I didn't have to pay for. It's all, hopefully you can start to see how this whole plan, this whole strategy, it's all starting to coalesce into a really powerful moment for me. Now, none of these spell decisions really make much of a difference here. We just have one research cycle left until we get the next one. Uh, Restore and Dead could be a helpful spell. Blizzard could also be a helpful spell, being able to reduce my enemy status resistance. I think being able to heal my army could be quite helpful, so I will go for that. Dark Spire can annex another province. Now, what I would like to do is, again, right, we have two farms, two quarries, and two lumber mills. That's our goal. So we want to get our second lumber mill. Uh, but also keep in mind we're building the Dark Forge here, so that's going to get rid of one of the lumber mills. Um, so I'll pop a... Where's the second quarry coming from? Uh, over here. Yes, so I will get a forester here. This city's going to have a little bit more difficult of a time developing because it's kind of like squished between a few other cities. Um, but that's actually not a big deal. We're going to use this opportunity, even though we're building over this forester, we're going to go ahead and build the granary and tap the granary ahead so that it stays boosted. And then anything that is dependent upon farms, I'm just going to tap ahead of the Dark Forge uh, or anything that's dependent upon foresters boosting them, which is typically going to be the granaries. Um, yeah, so I'll get that granary because food will allow me to develop. So the thing about food is the food lets you get the boosts, right? It lets you boost these buildings. And if you can boost buildings, you're developing your city 30% faster um, and 30% cheaper. So let's go ahead and enchant Fetid Legion. This is going to be a major upgrade to my army. It is quite expensive, but 10 extra hit points and weakening aura. So enemies that are adjacent to my units will just gain weakened now. It's fantastic. People should start to get like pretty damn scared about my melee units because um, like they're starting to now stack up a whole host of bonuses. Like even this shock unit, it's a tier one unit, rank one. It's got 74 health. 20 damage with up to a 60% increase. It steals 10 hit points and gets regeneration if it attacks weakened. Does 20% more damage against weakened. Has weakening aura. Frost blade, so it does extra damage against frozen and slowed units. It's just like, oh, what do you do? Um, I do need to make sure that I'm inflicting frozen and slowed on my enemies. I need to be better about that. We have met the city of Shining Course. It looks like it's owned by another player. They've already got it as their vassal. That's fine. Um, so here's the thing. The moment we, we start trying to win a magic victory, basically everyone on the map is going to declare war on us. Um, literally instantaneously. And that is going to be difficult for us to deal with. So we need to be prepared for it. Let's go ahead and get a... Oh, a claimed province has been captured. We're going to have to deal with that. Let's go ahead and get a expanded city spawn. Um, so he's only claiming provinces over here. That's fine. As long as he's not claiming like weird outposts to build teleporters inside my territory, that's okay. Uh, looks like the monsters in this node have leveled up. Monsters in neutral resource nodes do actually level up over time. So it is kind of in your interest to clear them early if you can. Do keep that in mind. All right, what are you missing? You got two shock units and an archer. You are a range unit, so you could probably do another shock unit. Um, I tell you what, I'll recruit a night guard for you. We finished researching with store undead, and now we can go for a new tier three book. Now, here's the thing. I talked about this a little bit last time, but we want to think about our tier four books. So if we take a look down at the tier four books of shadow, the Tome of the Reaper is kind of okay. Gives us a lot of ways to get souls. Allows us to resurrect units, mark enemies for death. Allows us to summon a reaper uh, and harvest population from cities. So our goal is to get to here, the Heart of Shadow, as soon as possible. We could go for the Tome of the Cold Dark. Now, the Tome of the Cold Dark would be very nice for a number of reasons. It would give us access to the Frosting Transformation, which would give us extra morale. Although we don't care about morale because we're undead. Uh, we could get Marching Winter. So the question is, do we want to try to improve our economy? Or do we want to try to improve our... Um, do we want to try to improve our economy or do we want to try to improve our military capabilities? So in order to research a tier four book, I'm going to need to research another tier two, tier three book. If I were to research another astral book, um, like the Tome of Summoning, because remember all of my undead units, they are technically magical origin units, right? I could have something like Summoning Well, which makes combat summon spells f uh, not cost mana. I could get Arcane S Restoration, another heal for magic origin. Um, allows me to just boost up my magic origin units. Arcane Bond allows me to steal magic origin units. It also gives me a combat summon spell and a astral serpent. This could be an interesting move. On the other hand, we could go for the Tome of Teleportation. The Astral Trade Relay is pretty decent. It's just a whole bunch of gold in your empire. The Tome of Terramancy would allow me to break down mountains, giving me more room for my empire. The Tome of, I believe it is either, no, the Tome of Glee? Fertility would allow me to restore my land, as would Glades. Ooh, it's hard to know, it's hard to know, it's hard to say. 
I think that thematically the Tome of the Cold Dark really fits with my build. I'm going to go for Marching Winter here. Uh, Frostling Transformation is a minor racial transformation. It'll make us immune to Frozen, give us Frost Resistance and Arctic Walk, which seems pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Card cardboard box built a stone mason, which is a building that gives you production. I can annex another province. This probably doesn't need to be a research well, honestly. Uh, I could change this to be my third forester in this city. And then I guess I could annex another farm. I'll need to find a quarry somewhere, but that'll be a bridge we cross later. So let's get a farm. Um, I could bring this up to a tier three city. This will give me access to the Overlord's Tower. Could be quite good, as well as the tier three Dark Knight, which is a insanely powerful shock unit. This would be our late game, like truly setting up for our late game here if we go for him. Tempting, 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 tempting. I really need to build the estate hall. So I tell you what, I am going to go ahead and build the town hall stronghold. And then I'll probably build the estate hall so I can just maximize that food income. The growth is the thing that's holding me back a little bit here. Right, perfect. We settled a fifth city, which will be called Catnip Fields. And this city is going to be heavily centered and focused around naval stuff and making use of the fishery tile improvement. However, we still have to develop the city in a reasonable manner. I'm going to go ahead and get started with a workshop in here. The thing we're really concerned to build in this city is um, lumber mills for the fishing boat related stuff. I will boost the population in here once so that I can get my lumber mills under construction. That will boost the storehouse and let me get that train going like a little bit sooner. Let's finish the recruitment of the night guard who will then join this army. Um, do we want to clear out this first? I think it's not a bad idea. Clear this out. Hopefully I get a good auto combat. Okay, a single pursuer dead is honestly, that's acceptable levels of loss. We can get him back in like a turn or two. Now, with this hero, I would like to take him down into the underground so that we can potentially settle a vassal city. It's not the most amazing location for a city, but there's just about enough room for a vassal city. I'd like to have a necromancer in this army, so let's go ahead and start to recruit one. Yeah, three turns is pretty reasonable. I make so much draft, it's actually insane. Even a freshly built city can recruit a necromancer in three turns, which is completely unheard of. Speaking of completely unheard of, this city's not grown fast enough. We definitely need lumber mills, so because this is going to have to be a coastal city as well. Um, and coastal cities require lumber mills to get their buildings boosted. So let's go ahead and start building the... F you build lumber mills to build the food line buildings, um, which should lead us down the pathway of growing the city large and efficiently and eventually getting to a shipwright guild. My ruler has leveled up, which I am quite happy about. I definitely want to get to Weaver, which allows her to refresh her abilities. I think it would be reasonable here to take Arcane Strength to give her just 10% damage and accuracy on all of her abilities. And Darth Meow Meow should be ready to do some Moida next turn. Oh, they came to fight me. Uh, let's auto combat that and see how it goes. We lost nothing. Amazing. Uh, I'll take it. We'll rebuild the quarry. Uh, we'll sit on the edge of our territory again like so and we'll look to clear out the small monster down let us go into the underground i think we can clear this out pretty cleanly should be an easy auto resolve no losses perfect should i should really be casting i keep forgetting to do it but i should really just cast soulbind army on everything that i attack let's go into here we're going to learn excavation which will allow my underground units to start breaking up this underground terrain. I'd like to clear out this Lost Queen's Crypt as well, because again, this will scale up the number of heroes that I've killed. It'll get me souls, mana, and knowledge. Uh, and we'll we'll plonk down a little a little crappy city here. In terms of spells, I'm going to cast another Amplify Mind, because I want to cast that on the new city that I made. Uh, people are starting to realize that I'm a threat, so they're starting to like negatively think about me. They're not quite at the point where they realize that I'm an end game threat. They're just kind of like, oh, he's kind of doing kind of well. We're up to 400 knowledge per turn in a tech rush build. Okay, so I can sacrifice one of my heroes. A stored the vicious would be sent to the crypt and it would allow Tarlina Lord Seeker to level up three times and my leader to level up once. That is actually ridiculous. Um, that is an insane like value proposition right there. Let her take over this army that that other leader was um, taking over. Um, I can actually just go into my crypt and resurrect that hero um, for 250 mana. So it's basically like they didn't die, but do we even want them? I mean, that's a question we can ask. We could take this as an opportunity to change the hero. Uh, but this guy just like leveled up to level 10, which is ridiculous. Uh, he has really bad skills, so maybe it's time that we reset him and decided to turn him into a paragon of virtue. So Tarlina, what do you got? You're elusive, excavate you swift. Um, you're just a regular hero. You ain't got nothing special about you, right? So we don't need to like build you around anything. So let's make you a magical support unit, I guess. Um, yeah, magical support unit it is. Scroll down to the bottom. What have we got? Draining Blade, Summon Elemental, Visions of Woe, Summon Animal. Uh, rallying Blessing. We don't care about the morale, that's the thing. 
Mm, okay, what if he took Demon Step? What if he made him into a melee support unit? Okay, that kind of has like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of pizzazz to it. We will be taking the sprint ability, which will allow him to ignore attacks of opportunity to be able to run around and lance people. Cull the weak, naturally. We'll take that. We will take Demon Step as our first signature ability. Then we will take Draining Blade as our second. This will give him a lot of sustain in melee. Uh, we will give you Defense 1, so you're better defended. Fighting 1, so you do more damage. Uh, you can also have Weakening Aura, so you get up into people's faces and make them weaker. Uh, defense 2 seems quite good. And then we'll give you Killing Momentum, which gives you an extra action point when you kill something. So pretty well built. We've got three skill points to spend down here. Let's take Vigor to make him harder to kill. Um, and then we'll take Soul Collector as well. And then you will be taking defensive training to give every unit in the army a 10% health increase or effective health increase. Right, perfect. So we set him up as a melee support unit and he will continue to develop in that direction. Now, my main leader also leveled up, which is kind of a fun situation to be in because we can finally get the Weaver ability um, at long last. Let's cast Soulbind Army on this army that we discovered in the underground. Do I have a summon? I don't. I kind of wish the spell book was a little bit easier to sort. I need to cast. A, there's, a, there's a few things that I need to cast. Stuff that's kind of hanging around. Um, let's let's make sure. Let's let's start getting rid of all those spells. So we're going to cast amplify minds on this city. We are going to cast. We need to get through a lot of desecrate structures. Wow. Okay. So it takes a lot of souls to do the desecrate structure. Five mana. It allows you to turn souls into mana, which is kind of a interesting exchange. I'd almost want things to go the other direction. Um, but let's start. Let's start catching up with all these these. Um, Spell casts like Frosting Transformation, Frenzying Focus, Necrotic Magic, all these things that we've kind of left by the wayside over the last little while. Right, let's start clearing out this monster den. Should be an easy auto resolve, shouldn't lose a unit. My units are strong enough to just hold the line. Um, let's clear the monster den itself because we might get some useful items from this. All right, we did take a decent amount of damage, but we got what we needed from it. Money, food, Staff of the Magi, a tier three, Astral, Staff, Ring of Protection. Okay, okay. Some interesting stuff going on there. I think I will keep the Ring of the Vicious Killer. We finished Frosting Transformation with our 400 research per turn. Let's go for Marching Winter. Now, what Marching Winter does is it turns all of the tiles in the city into Arctic and then gives you two food and two production for all those tiles. Uh, we, we don't have Arctic adaption, though, so we won't be able to build farms. So we need to be careful to make sure that we do this at the right moment. Now I'm starting to regret my choice. Oh, well. So 3 a.m. Meowing Fit needs a new leader. I'll put uh, Bell or Lord Seeker in charge. I will come in here and have a little peek. A little, little, little Pico. Uh, I'll grab the Library and the Arcane Institute to increase this tech. And we'll also grab the Academy. Spend a little bit of time just bumping up the science again. The more science we have, the better. Instability isn't low enough for it to be a problem yet, so I don't need the Overlord's Tower. It'll be something we do try to build, though, eventually. We have fully built this city. No, we haven't. We haven't built the Estate Hall yet. So we'll build that Estate Hall. That'll be another 30 food. That's like another six farms, just to put that into perspective. It's a ton of food. A ton of food. Speaking of ton of food, uh, Warm Laptop actually just finished that building, which means it's it's cranking out population for us. Um, we need some quarries in here. So let's get the third farm first, I guess. Drop a little farm over there. That'll let me build up the stonemason. Ooh, here's a useful guy. Uh, a Chaos Adept. Maybe I'll recruit uh, Tanja Quintus. That Chaos Adept will give me an extra three Chaos Affinity, bringing me up to four, uh, which will allow me to gain some Chaos Abilities really quickly. But more importantly, uh, it means I would only need to research one more Chaos book. And then I could start researching late game Chaos stuff. So we could do something interesting there. Also, I don't know why he's giving a ton of food to his city, but he is. And I'm not going to cry about that. Okay, it's saying that this is a risky battle. I should win it handily. Yep, perfect. All that regen was working out nicely for me. Pick up 20 souls. And uh, there's like, unless you really gain a lot of satisfaction from the battles, it is completely not necessary for you to fight every battle. You know the saying, pick your battles. Very true in this game. Don't bother with fight fights if you don't, if you won't enjoy them. Play the game the way that you want to. I'm going to go ahead and build an outpost here so that I can start to build up the... Um, the vassal city here that I plan to make and we will go ahead and oh I just am slightly out of reach we'll go ahead and clear this out to make room for the city that we plan down here I'm going to take battlefield looting this will give me a little bit of passive gold based on the killing that I do so that'll be helpful um, my imperium income is a little bit stretched right now so let's do a little army reorganization as we go to for the pilgrim's passage we have a warlock in here I'm going to go ahead and switch over a white witch into that army so we have Three range units and three melee, which is like a good distribution in my opinion. Now, I'm a little bit worried about these phoenixes actually, because we are weak to fire, so we're not going to take this fight just yet. 
Um, that'll be something we take in a little bit. Uh, maybe after we kill the Pilgrim's Passage. We want to kill this because it's worth 25 mana. Plus, it's also worth 5, five Imperium. Imperium is a really important resource because you get like really powerful late game stuff from it. Uh, we're not quite yet ready to start building our next two stacks of units. We're kind of going to stay at three stacks for a little while. And the main reason for that, of staying at, two, at, the, at, that, at that number of stacks, is to allow us to have enough gold to keep developing my economy. However, the good news is the city of Catnip Field is going to be an absolute gold bonanza, okay? Look at all these oyster reefs that are around. That's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40 gold all on its own. Let me get those oyster reefs in tow. We have enough foresters to boost the shipyard, which is going to be another 10 gold. The fishmonger will be another 15 food. The Grand Wharf will be 20 production. And then finally, we'll go for the Seafarers Guild, which will give us gold draft food and production based on the fisheries in this city. So that's going to be, the city is going to just go wild. And we're going to invest quite a bit in it to try to develop it. So I am actually looking forward to it quite a bit. So I recognize the city of Darkspire needs a third farm. Can I get one? I can. Okay, perfect. And it needs, um, needs a couple more foresters. There is an exploit in the game, by the way, right now, where you can actually transfer um, special province improvements to your cities and then you can just infinite I could I could infinitely stack soul wells right now if I would like to I'm, I'm not going to do that because it's an extremely game breaking exploit but it is something you can do it's quite fun so the seeds have started to be built the seed of order has been built the seed of materium has been built um, by a couple of other players now when you build those seeds you do give other players a reason to attack you they can preemptively strike to slow you down in your victory condition so just do be careful about that I think I would be willing to lose both of these tier one dark warriors, but not all of that. Okay. Yeah, the problem is that we're up against units that do spirit damage. Am I willing to accept this as an outcome for this? I guess it's technically an opportunity to clear out a whole bunch of unit upkeep and start to replace them. Um, we get a whole bunch of Imperium. Uh, let's just take another whole bunch. So we just got 600 Imperium there. Uh, yeah, that was worth the auto resolve actually. Um, 100% because now I can start thinking about what's the late game composition of this army of Darth going to be rather than focusing on like oh I need to get out tier 1 units what kind of tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 units am I going to put in this army mostly I'm going to stick to tier 3s it's mostly going to be Dark Knights which is this unit right here a very very cool very powerful unit but a heavy charge strike of 22 damage and 4 frost damage you know, to put that in perspective the tier 1 Dark Warrior is 16 and 4 so uh, quite a bit stronger also has Dark Surge, which is a um, two hex cone AOE ability. Super powerful. Also has Corpse Eating, Astral Blood, all the special things. Um, and inherits all of the regular bonuses. Is quite expensive to maintain. 20 gold and 5 mana. Compare that to a Dark Warrior, which is 7 gold and 3 mana. Or a Night Guard that's 14 and 5. So quite expensive to maintain my Dark Knights. Um, super worth it. I think I might actually start recruiting them now. But I do need to think about what my late game composition truly looks like here. Like, if I imagine I'm designing the stack of units that I want here. I want this hero. I want a necromancer. Do I want two necromancers? And three dark knights supported by necromancers? And my hero, I think my hero is a support unit as well, if I recall correctly. We wouldn't have a way of reliably inflicting weakening though. So maybe I would bring a warlock for those weakening bolts and the sundering curse. And then we don't have a way to really inflict frozen. This is the problem. Although I think my Dark Knights have Weakening Aura, actually, now that I think about it, with, f with Fetid Legion. So maybe we can get away with Double Necromancer and Triple Dark Knight. That way we can just have a full Tier 3 army. Uh, but we don't, we don't have to actually recruit all those just now. But, but that's, that's the goal. And the idea behind this is um, we just like traded out an old stack. So we're not, but we got something for trading out that old stack. We got this, this Ancient Wonder for it, right? So that's going to be worth Mana, Imperium. All good stuff, right? So we trade out this old army that was using up upkeep and was expensive. And then we replace that with a new army to take up that that room in our imperial budget, if you know what I mean. So hopefully that explains that decision a little bit better. I don't know if I was explaining that very well. Now, we're building an outpost down here. And I just kind of want to zoom in and out so I can get a sense of where I need to break things. I'm going to come in here. I already have basic seafaring. We could unlock teleporters. I'm not going to un unlock those until I feel ready to properly explain them to you. Let's cast Frenzying Focus. This will give all of my magic-based units Frenzy, which means they gain 10% damage every time they land an attack, which is quite good for like necromancers and all that sort of jazz. We're also going to go ahead and cast Necrotic Magic, which will allow them to inflict de decaying. We finished researching Marching Winter. We'll start casting that on cities in the near future. Um, the reason I'm not casting it is because I want to build up to all of my tier 3 buildings and get all of my um, guilds before I go for Marching Winter. Guilds being the tier 4 building. You can only build one tier 4 building. I'll take Rotting Explosion. 
this is just a scout buff, this is just a scout buff, this is the only real spell, I don't want to shuffle, Rotting Explosion is a reasonable spell because it allows you to uh, basically detonate a zombie and turn it into a, a bomb for 30 damage, quite good. Really need to build a mint in here, that's 20 gold, so we'll probably have to look into getting a Dark Forge soon. We're almost at 9 population, which means we can start looking into transitioning this city into its... Um, into its final build. So why are tier three units so much better than tier one units? Well, there's a whole variety of reasons and it really just starts to come down to spells. Um, if we take a look at the Dark Warrior here, it costs me seven gold and three mana to upkeep. It's got 70 health and it does 16 and four damage, but it has no real other special bonuses. It's really cost efficient and cost efficiency is really important to the early game. Towards the late game, uh, you can only ever bring 18 units to a battle. So in the early game, you need cost efficiency so that you can fill up that 18 slots for as cheap as possible. Then in the late game, you want slot efficiency. You want to pack as much power into that 18 slots as possible. So that's why I'm going to recruit Necromancers, right? Because a Necromancer has 80 health and has raise undead. So if another unit dies in the battle, this guy just goes, hey, you get back up. He strengthens undead, which affects all of my units. That's a 20% damage boost. Uh, and then you compare that to like a Dark Knight, right? The the Dark Warrior, right? Seven gold, three mana to upkeep. The Dark Warrior is 22 gold and five mana to upkeep. But it does so much more damage in an AoE. Um, it has so much more health. It has so much more armor, right? It has three armor compared to the, the one. So it literally has like 25% more effective health before you factor in the fact that it has more health. So yeah, just really, really good stuff. So we have the outpost down here. I'm going to immediately found the City of the Dark Felines. This will make sense, I promise. Oh no, I actually, I built this outpost in the wrong spot. I need to change things. Hang on, let me think about this. Okay, yeah, I built this outpost in the wrong spot, so I have to kind of undo my moves here a little bit. What I was supposed to do was to build the, build an outpost here so that I could claim the Lost Queen's Crypt, thus getting two mana, two knowledge and a soul for all the heroes in my crypt. Then I was supposed to build, I guess I'll put the city over here on the left, and then I build a vassal city for two reasons. A, to claim all this land and hold it for me, uh, you basically, you build a city and then you release it as a vassal. And then B, it'll actually provide me with a little bit of income over time. And it'll also give me something to do with my Whispering Stones. So it's kind of like the logic behind continuing to expand. We finished Rotting Explosion. We can do one more research before we go to the tier four tomes, which is going to be quite fun. Um, soul Overflow. I don't like to get Soul Overflow. While it's a really good spell, the AI tends, the, the battle AI tends to waste a lot of your souls on that spell. So that's why I'm not actually choosing to research that. I will get a lesser so, so, snow spirit. In a pinch, I can then use mana to recruit a unit, which is quite handy. So, Tome of the Reaper, or the Tome of Oblivion. What saith you? It would be really nice to play around with the Reaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the Tome of the Reaper, get started on that. And uh, let's see, soul siphons. Oh, so I can get I can get souls from sieging. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and get the, the Reaper immediately. You know, let me have a look, Mark for Death. This is a spell. I don't care about that. So I'm gonna leave that. We've unlocked the Root of Shadow. And I suppose in this episode, right, based on the maneuvering, the manipulation, the cycling out my units, we have put ourselves in a pretty damn good position to go for a win here. I think I preemptively built this Dark Forge. I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a Forester, and then I'm going to build my third farm in this city. Then I just need a, um, then I just need one more quarry, and then I've got the three of each of the basic tile improvements, which will allow me to fully build out up to tier three in every category in this city. Which is fun, which is means that we can then transition into getting our tier four building and then setting the city up to be a late game fortress to actually hold the uh, the enemies at bay while we win the magic victory. Speaking of which, warm laptop, we're going to go ahead and annex our third and final quarry in here, which means we now have three farms, three quarries, and three lumber mills. That is the goal position you want to get to because that means you can build basically any building in here boosted to its tier three form right before you pick which guild you want to build. You can only ever build one guild. So that's why that's why I develop my cities like this. It's kind of just the way I am as a player. It is possible in certain circumstances and certain builds where you maybe you rush like straight to a smith's guild because that gives you a ton of drafted food. Um, maybe you rush towards a um, mage's guild. So your support units are really strong. There's like there's things you can do you can rush these guilds. I don't recommend it because they're so much cheaper gold-wise if you actually boost them. But this is just the efficient way that I found to build my economy. I don't know if it's the correct way, but it's the way that feels right to me when I play. Now, I've got a couple of lumber mills that I can build in Catnip Field. I have a choice between getting Iron Deposit and getting the Tranquility Pool. While the research is really nice, we have 400 research per turn right now. So I'm going to go ahead and take that production so I can build this city up a little bit quicker. And ooh, we can go for the Fishmonger. 
that's what we like to see. That's an extra 15 food. Then we just need to build the Grand Wharf. And then finally, the Seafarers Guild to turn this city into a economic powerhouse. Really excited about that possibility. Oh, man. Because of all that Imperium we picked up earlier, now we've got the pick of the litter when it comes to the Shadow Affinities. Oh, my God. Now, it would have been really nice to get adaptive research way earlier into the game. Um, making research structures 50% cheaper, both in production and gold. Uh, I could have optimized this actually a little bit better had I gone for a little bit more Astral Affinity earlier in the game. That's something I should consider maybe opening with an Astral Tome sooner into the game than I did. Maybe the Tome of Evocation isn't a bad move. But... We have a lot of choices here. I think the obvious thing to do here is to just take Spying Shadow so that I have total vision of the world. I am now a visionary. Like, I, I literally, I just see everything. It is the most fun part of playing Shadow is that you just, you have revealed the entire world. I can see where every army is. I can tell who they're aligned to, what they're doing, where they belong. This is the sort of, like, power fantasy that exists in Age of Wonders 4. Is just being able to reveal the entire map uh, with a single click. It does come with probably some performance downsides, though. <laughs> um, have to track all that data. And also, now my scouts have no job, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, disband them. <laughs> he did a good job exploring, like, to be fair. Um, but he's, just, he's no longer necessary. He's surplus to requirements. Which, to be honest, is saving me six gold per turn now that I've abandoned them um, per scout. I think I had three of them still roaming out there. So that was, what, 18 gold per turn? I'm happy as heck. Right. I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of this episode. In the next episode, we're probably going to get ourselves set up for the magic di victory properly. And then, um, yeah, show it off. But I would say we're well on pace for victory. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.